We are going to come back to the landing gear to add rotating wheels and suspension and all that. But before we can actually do that, we're going to make the airplane able to move. And therefore, we're now going to add the engine. You can see me here in fast forward adding a placeholder for the cowling and I'm going into way too much detail for this face of the building. But here we'll slow down the animation for a bit because I'm adding a cylinder, which is uh, an interesting part. Here are the cylinder caps. And as soon as I have them finished, I'll merge them into a single object. But rather than make nine separate cylinders, we're going to add an array. And we're going to array this around an empty. So I'll add an empty. And it's important that the empty is exactly in the correct uh, center of the object. Now we rotate the empty. And because it's a nine cylinder engine, we're going to rotate this by 360 divided by nine is 40 degrees. So every 40 degrees, we will have a cylinder. We'll add the array. And by default, it's set to relative offset. So we deselect this. Select Object Offset and then select the Empty. And you can see it's now way too large. And that's because the scale of the cylinder was not set to 1. So it's scaling it up. So would you do Control a Scale. All we now need to do is set the count to 9. And then we have a 9 cylinder, cylinder engine. We're going to add the propeller and we'll start with the shaft, which is an important part because this will hold the rotation animation of the entire propeller. And on this shaft, we're going to add a propeller hub. In this case, it's a three bladed propeller. So we're first going to make one part or one blade of the propeller and then use the circle array methods that we used before to uh, add another few blades. Finally, we're going to organize our objects by giving them names and adding them in one collection, adding the material and then, and then export objects. And now we can load it into Plane Maker. Okay, we go standards, objects, add and select our file and objects engine and make sure the numbers here are the same as the objects before and we have added the 3d object as you can see the normals are not correct you can only see the inside of our uh, cowling object so we quickly go back to blender and correct the normals here on the top there is face orientation and everything that's red is basically inside out which makes it easier to see. So basically select an object, edit mode, select all, normals, recalculate outside. Repeat this for all the red objects. Oh, 
And now you can see the normals, the orientation is all correct. Now with the 3D model in place, we're going to add the physics to the engine in Playmaker. Go standard, engine specs, locations, add an engine, and we have a carburetor reciprocating engine. The power is 525 horsepower. We are going to build the aircraft now with the Ride Cyclone 1750D of 525 horsepower at 1900 RPMs. To set the location, we press space, then we go into wireframe mode, and now basically you move the dot to where you want the propeller to be. Then we'll add a propeller. In our case, it's a fixed propeller. And to see it, we have to adjust the prop radius, the root cord, and the tip cord. Now, when it comes to propellers, Explain Playmaker is a really smart program because it's really complex to calculate the angle of attacks and the angle of incidences per part of the propeller. But here, with a few simple settings, Explain will calculate a good propeller for us. So, the design test at Prop Disk, as you can see in the description, is the design airspeed of the aircraft plus half of the prop wash. So I'm going to imagine, let's say 100 knots plus a few more, 130 would do. Design RPM is the maximum RPM you use in the takeoff. So 1900 in our case. Then the design angle of attack at the root and the tip. You could probably play with this, but for now we're just going to set the default values to and the remaining settings are not that important at the moment. We'll come back to those when we're going to tweak the performance. For now, we're just going to set the default values. Now, I'd like to test this in X-Plane, but we still have to add a fuel tank. So I'll just quickly place uh, a temporary fuel tank. Okay, let's quickly add some fuel into the tank. There we go. Okay, the engine is working. But as you can see, the uh, 3D propeller is not rotating yet. To find the correct data ref to connect the propeller to explain, I'm using a plugin called Data Ref Editor, and I will put a link in the description below. We're going to animate the propeller shaft. Now we need to find the correct data ref to tie our 3D propeller to the simulator. So we search everything with the word prop. And you can see it's quite a list, so we have to narrow this down. So we select only changing objects. Now I'm going to engage a starter, and now you can see a few objects are stationary, and then they move again, and then they change color, so they're easier to find. So there it is, sim, flight model 2, engine, prop angle degrees, or prop no disc rotation angle, one of those, it should be it. So back to Playmaker, we copy and paste this data ref and add an animation. And now you can see at first it's not working, and that's because this data ref has multiple engines. So to tell explain, we need to have engine one, which we only have one engine, we still have to put zero in square brackets. So zero for the first engine, in brackets one for the second engine, two for the third engine, and so on. And let's load this again. And now it's working. It's only now 180 degrees out of phase, but that's going to be a fairly easy fix here in Playmaker. OK, 
Okay, one last thing for now that I'm going to show you on engines is the prop disk feature. Uh, for example, if I now actuate the engine, it rotates, you can see the disk, but you can still see the 3D propeller object. And there's a data ref connected to this, which is same flight model 2 engines prop is a disk, which is now a zero for all the engines. And if I actuate the starter again, it becomes a one. Now we can use this data ref. I'll just do copy name, go to plane maker, select the propeller blades, add data ref. And here we paste control V at zero in square brackets. And instead of transformation, now we're going to do show and we do add another data ref. And we're going to copy paste this and then hide. Now I would like to see the propeller when the prop disk is zero. And I want to hide the propeller when the prop disk is one. Export object. Developer. Reload current aircraft and arts. And now when we engage the starter, the 3D propeller hides and you can only see the prop disk.